Um, we've got about 10 or 12 minutes or so for, for um, questions. Um, as I said earlier, if you could um, put your hand in the air and um, uh, give us your name and your, um, your affiliation if you've got a question. Um, you'll have to sort of catch my eye. It's quite a tricky room to chair because I can barely see the back. Um, but uh, in, in the absence of a, of a starting question, I will, I will kick in. Um, I chair Lighthouse here in Brighton, um, a new NPO digital sort of specialist agency. Um, one of the questions I think is, uh, that is coming through is, um, and this has come up at other events as well, there are particular objectives around business model development and audience engagement for this fund. Does that mean artistic innovation per se isn't included, isn't eligible, won't score highly, or is it the case that artistic innovation sort of uh, has to run through, through the whole thing a bit like, um, well, let's go for Brighton through the rock? Um, is that, is that the, the approach you're taking? Which, which end are you looking at it from? Maybe Richard? I'll have a go at that. Um, well, I think the important thing to say about that is that, um, of course, throughout our entire range of investments that we are supporting um, a, a, a wide range of organisations, both through the national portfolio and through grants for the arts and other strategic funds to uh, invest in uh, artistic innovation uh, through digital technology or not. Um, uh, I think the point about this fund is that it gives us an opportunity to focus um, not an enormous amount of money in the scheme of the Arts Council's budget, actually, on ways in which organisations can address um, the, the key issues of uh, developing their audiences and developing new business models and revenue streams. If they are able to do that or choose to do that through um, means that involve artistic innovation, then that's fantastic. But it's not necessarily a prerequisite. Um, and if uh, projects that are involved in artistic innovation do so without necessarily uh, demonstrating that they are hitting those other issues of audience development or uh, new business models, new revenue streams, uh, then they won't be funded through this scheme. So I, I hope that's, that's clear. Um, and it's certainly something that we've thought quite carefully about and talked to the sector about. But it is an issue that um, we take quite seriously because we do support artistic innovation uh, very much so. Um, but we have to see how this focus uh, for this particular fund will help us address the purpose that we've identified for it. Okay. So there's a logical follow-up to that, which is you, um, both you and Hassan have said um, that this, this fund is to some degree testing and piloting some elements that may be used in the, in the larger £20 million pound fund later. Rep same question, <laughs> £20 million pound fund. Is it the case that the criteria of this fund will roll into the bigger one, or is, it, is, is, is there something else involved in that one, do you think? I know it's early days for that. Well, as I've said, um, we'll be announcing the details of those funds later on in this year, so it would be um, inappropriate for me to entirely preempt that, but um, the, the same answer would apply. So if, if we were focusing that fund in a way that meets the needs of organisations to help them to uh, reach new audiences and to address uh, new business models and revenue streams, then that's really where the focus needs to lie. Artistic innovation would be the means by which we would do it, not necessarily the purpose for uh, the fund. The, the, the fund, the, the overall um, uh, £20 million pound, uh, digital innovation programme that we'll be announcing uh, will cover a wider range of initiatives and uh, ways of us supporting the sector. But I've already talked about uh, the importance of our investment in the national portfolio organisations, many of whom will be wanting to, uh, to support artistic innovation. And also, I've also pushed the uh, Grants for the Arts programme, where we will absolutely want to encourage organisations uh, who are not MPOs to uh, apply for projects that, uh, that, do, um, that, that, that offer artistic innovation as part of what they're, they're trying to achieve as well. Okay. Um, question or comment from here. Um, what's your name? Where do you Hello. come from? Please. <laughs> Hi. Uh, Julian Jordan from uh, an organisation called Right Out Loud. Uh, Hello, Julian. A poetry organisation with a big successful website. Um, my question is to do with this partnership issue. Uh, forgive me if, if I've not read the documentation sufficiently. Um, is it essential that, that one of the partners is a digital organisation, the other is an artistic organisation? Or if, if there was some other element, for example, we have to be pretty good at both, both sides of, of things, but we're not 
it's a bloody good at is research and uh, developing business models. And that would be that it would be useful for us to be able to partner with uh, an organisation that's better at the business models uh, notion. So. Awesome. Okay. So uh, yeah, the um, the proposals need to be led by an arts and cultural organisation um, in England. So that's um, a requirement of the. Um, Scheme, as I said, we've been tr we've been trying to lower as much as possible the barriers to entry, as it were, in terms of definitions of what an arts and cultural organisation is, because the key focus, as I said, in this fund is the knowledge that's being created, rather than actually where where that knowledge is being created. Um, it is essential. We are insisting that they partner in their bid with a technology provider, but again, we've tried to be very clear in our definitions of what a technology provider is. That doesn't necessarily mean. Um, sort of, you know, a listed technology company. I mean, it could, it's essentially anyone who provides a technology service can demonstrably um, um, sort of put into their applications that they provided a, uh, a, te a technology service that's relevant to the, the project in, in question. So if, you, if, you're, if you're one of those many organisations that find yourself sort of being partly self-identified as an arts and culture organisation in terms of what you do, why you do it, how you're funded, for example, on the one hand, but also using technology, maybe even developing new technology, um, and holding IP, um, then you know you're in you're in a an, in a happy situation where you can be both an art, you know identify yourself as both an arts and cultural organisation or as a technology company, because what we're trying to do in this fund we can't do everything with it, and not least because it's not a large set of funds, we've had to make some sort of um, decisions on what we're really trying to achieve through it, and one of the things we are trying to do is partner organizations that um, typically would struggle to get funding to partner. And therefore, w that means we're ruling out situations, unfortunately, if you have one organization that finds itself having the in-house technological nous to do what it wants to do. If it's an arts organization that already has that, we are still, to be clear, we are still insisting that they partner with a technology provider. And what if, and second part of that question was, what if uh, you need help with the business models piece? Well, actually, and this is connected to the bit I didn't answer on research, just to be absolutely clear, the reason why we are working with the HRC to provide research services for this project is that we're not expecting arts organisations or technology companies, for that matter, to, be re to write research proposals. I mean, the, 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 issue, the emphasis must be on the, the, a clear, testable proposition and a relevant proposition about innovation insofar as it meets the fund's objectives, like a burning question that the arts and cultural sector needs the answer to. Um, but, but we're not expecting the proposals to build in research design and research methodology. That's the whole point of us connecting with the researchers. So if you, you don't have to have any research expertise whatsoever, um, as either as an arts organisation or as a technology provider to, to apply for this fund. So at risk of me sounding thick, which is one of my favourite hobbies, um, does that mean if I went to a university and I went to the business school, and said to the business, and I say I've got I've got the technology, I've got the artistic bit. I go to the business school and say we want to research a business model question. Is that in scope? A business model question is certainly within scope, um, but what we're not um, expecting organisations to do, in fact, we're not requiring them to do, is to go and find identify their own business school. I mean, essentially, it's it's down to us to ensure that the all the relevant research services that an a project will need are essentially available, and, we, and that's our responsibility as funding partners to ensure that happens. Okay, so you'd help do that matchmaking if that was the question, if that yeah. was a research question, you and the HRC, presumably. Yeah, and even that's tricky, of course. We appreciate some organisations already have established relationships with researchers, and, um, but many don't, and we had to make a decision on this, and what we felt was that um, the needs of those organisations that don't have established relationships with business schools, for example, um, um, is something we need to cater for in this fund. Okay, that sounds like a fairly full answer, I hope, yeah. Okay, um, we've got time for a couple more. There's one just towards the back near. Angela's got the mic, I think. And then, and then one next to her, and then we're done, I think. Off to coffee. Hello. Hi. 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 Um, we're developing new, using new technologies to develop new uh, intellectual property models for all creative industries. Great. Um, I'm slight, still going to be slightly confused towards the, well, the weighting of first fund is towards development of digital content, so arts organisations taking their existing programmes online to broaden that audience, or whether it's development of new business models that will generate new income, new opportunities, new innovation. Okay, let's try and clarify that. Richard, is that for you? Um, Initially, at least, it's 
it's both of those things, in fact. Um, and I think um, it's helpful to, um, to just perhaps trot through, Hassan, if you could just trot through the, the themes that we're, we're aiming to focus the, um, the, the fund around. But in terms of your, your question, um, the, the opportunity uh, that we have to test the, the way in which um, digital content can be used to reach new audiences is part of what we're trying to achieve. And the way in which digital, te digital technology can help organizations to, um, to develop their business model or identify new, new revenue streams as a result of um, uh, any kind of um, uh, digital technology partnership that they can facilitate is also part of what we're trying to achieve. But I think it helps to kind of break it down when we look at the themes. So perhaps we can just kind of, kind of go through those again. Sure. Um, so, I mean, first thing, just to echo what Richard said, the overarching objectives of the fund is to support two forms of innovation, insofar as it's meaningful to talk about these as two distinct forms of innovation. It's audience, innovation and audience engagement, by which we're referring to depth, breadth, and width, and that's defined in terms of what that actually means in the call, and business model innovation. And it's and or business model innovation. So a project doesn't necessarily have to be able to test propositions around both innovation and audience engagement and business model innovation. Could do one or the other, or, or both. I mean, we, we, we want to keep that flexible. But those are the two aspects of innovation that we're focusing primarily in this fund. So, so Richard's absolutely right. It, in some sense, the answer is both. I think both of those examples you gave would be within scope, to either together or one or the other. Um, in terms of what the thematic areas are, again, these are fairly high level, um, but they're the ones I mentioned in the presentation. We, we, these really came out, actually, it was quite striking. I mean, we, we did these 60 semi-structured interviews, and we, we published the results from that on the call, and we also used Google Moderator to do an, more of an open consultation exercise. And um, two of us independently went through the results of the Google Moderator um, and then compared notes, and it was Andrew and myself, and compared notes in terms of how those, what the key thematic areas that came out of that and compared that with the semi-structured interviews. And it's, you do get some fairly striking patterns. And these six areas that I mentioned, social media and UGC, distribution, mobile and gaming, data and archive, education and learning, and resources, um, were pretty much, you know, I mean, it, it, that's what came out of the exercise. Um, and obviously would, be, would welcome feedback on the process that we used to identify those themes. But they really, you know, they also seemed pretty intuitive, actually, to, to, to us as well, I think, in terms of our priors. Um, and, uh, and as I say, any propositions to test either audience engagement innovation and or, and or business model innovation. Uh, and we're under no illusions here about obviously the challenges in, in sort of experimenting with new business models in this area. Um, but you, both of those would be in scope. So hopefully Maxine, I don't know if that answers your question yeah. between us. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah. Um, so, uh, and, and the sixth one, resources, is a strange word, isn't it? Because it sort of means using di digital technology to do things more efficiently, to make your organisation more resilient. Um, it, yeah. That's come up previously, so that would sort of cover more of your business model as an IP piece. Um, that's come up in previous sessions, it's just worth flagging. Um, okay, one final question, if you can, please. Angela? Hi, I'm Sally Goldsley from Discover Story Centre in um, East London, we're a new NPO. You might have just answered my question, which might make your, my question short and your answers short, but um, we are currently d looking at developing a, a digital story-based project with a digital publisher for children and young people, so it's absolutely about reaching new audiences, it's about engaging, it's about content, because it's about working with artists. Um, the, the, the new revenue stream element of it, because the idea is it goes dire it, it's directly reaching children um, rather than through agencies of schools or whatever. So how you create a new revenue stream, I haven't got a clue. So the, I suppose my question is, I think you kind of answered it where it could be either or, but if it's going to be an incredibly competitive, a part of, I suppose in a way, part of the R&D might be working with Nesta on how do you is it possible to develop a revenue stream, a business model, from something that's directly reaching people who don't have an income stream? Does that make sense, this question? It, it does, and I think it's obviously a very good illustration of how challenging it is to explore new business models. If it was as straightforward as knowing, you know, if we knew the answer to those questions, we, we wouldn't have the need for the R&D. So I think, um, 
I mean, just to be clear, although it would be a very, very competitive process, we imagine, and certainly the signs are that there's a lot of interest in, in, in this, you know, funding streams for this sort of activity, um, the, the, the selection criteria are very, very clear here on, you know, the proposition, the relevance of that proposition to the wider arts and cultural sector, um, and, uh, and, and we, therefore, there's no inbuilt bias against R&D projects that are more riskier than others, let's put it that way. I mean, you know, I mean, almost by definition. I mean, this is one of the reasons why we're doing this sort of fund is that we want to support testing of propositions, which would be very difficult to do otherwise, and, and that inevitably means an element of risk. So, so I, I, I certainly would feel that sort of challenge that you describe does not rule, you know, does not rule such a project out of the scope for this fund. Um, Richard, do you want to add anything to that, or does that's that fit? No, that's okay. great. Brilliant. Okay, okay, there we are. We love each other. Hopefully that was slightly useful. Um, uh, it's time for a cup of coffee um, and um, for me to say thank you to um, uh, my colleagues on the panel. Um, they're staying around. Um, I know um, Richard um, and Hassan are around and uh, Philip's around for a little bit longer, I think. So by all means, direct your questions to them. Um, if we could be back in in 10 minutes' time, if they can serve us coffee that quickly, that will help us get to lunch on time. So uh, 11.45 if you can, please. And thanks again, gentlemen.